get started. Uh, first of all, I'd like to welcome everyone to a public hearing uh, held by the Town Row uh, Town Board in relation to Local Law 6 of 2021, uh, specific to the town's water ordinance. And Uh, before I open it up to the public comment, I uh, just want to briefly uh, specify that this proposed local law uh, would establish rules and regulations for the use and operation of the town consolidated water district and further setting rates for capital costs and operation and maintenance costs. And as I indicated earlier, uh, upon adoption, this will become uh, local law number six for 2021. So at this time, I'd like to uh, ask the uh, clerk to uh, read the uh, public hearing notice of uh, hearing and direct. Town of Monroe notice of public hearing to consider adoption of local law. Notice is hereby given pursuant to section 20 of the municipal home rule law in the state of New York for the public hearing will be held by the town board of the town of Monroe on November 9th, 2021 at 6 45 p.m. at the town municipal complex located at 351 Reynolds Road in Monroe, New York for the purpose of considering the adoption of local law number six of 2021. If adopted, local law number six of 2021 would repeal chapter 145 in its entirety and replace it with a new chapter 145 to apply to the consolidated water district. Written comments on local law six of 2021 can be submitted to the town clerk up and through the time of the public hearing. A copy of proposed local law number six of 2021 can be obtained at the Monroe Town Municipal Complex and on the town's website that was published on November 3rd. Thank you. And uh, has the clerk received any uh, official testimony? No. no. So we have not received any uh, testimony in the written form. Uh, this time uh, I'll ask if uh, any member of the public wishes to be heard on proposed local law uh, number six. You want me to briefly talk about it or not? Um, sure, you can, uh, for uh, the information of our residents, that would be helpful. Okay. So we will have a special counsel, William Ryan, uh, who has been working with us on the consolidated uh, effort for our water districts, and he's going to provide a brief overview of uh, what this local law would entail. Thank you, I'll be mercifully brief. Um, <laughs> What this law does is codify the rules and regulations with regard to uh, the infrastructure construction of, of water districts and sewer uh, mains and lines. And it also codifies for you what we previously have done with the uh, joint consolidation agreement and the uh, final order and determination by this board back in July when we consolidated the various water districts. And the local law also allowed you, the town board in the future to, if need be, amend rates, whether for O&M or for capital by resolution, as opposed to amending a local law. Uh, there is a little bit of work that needs to be done in the future, which is more technical in nature in terms of uh, the type of balloting you need for, for the system, uh, uh, the type of pipe, the type of hydrant, but that is more of an engineering and departmental exercise. Uh, that's it. Great, the simplest one. Thank you for assisting me. Sure. Thank you uh, very much, Mr. Ryan. Um, and so at this time, I'll ask again if any member of the public wishes to be heard. What's that? Uh, yeah, let me just go to uh, uh, Zoom to see if there's any member of the public. Then. There is no member of the public online. So we have no members of the public that wish to be heard uh, either online or in person. And there has been no written testimony submitted. So at this time, uh, Councilman Hogan uh, wishes to be heard. So uh, I was working with that. 
just going through this under section 21 maintenance and repair placement, section 21, sub B, for the leaking current service line and ownership was the cause of the to be repaired at normal expense to the applicant failure to take back such repair after two days written notice from the department of the department of the water service to be discontinued until such repair has been made. And then I want to go to 25C, protection of service components. And I just want to make sure that we're talking about the same thing here, but um, in sub C, upon discovery of any leaks in the water service pipes and any pipes should be used side of the curb stock of the building, the department should notify the user of such leaks or require such user at the owner's expense to make necessary repairs thereto within a period of two days from the date of service of such notice. Such notice shall be either served personally or a certified mail return receipt request upon failure of the owner. Uh, shall make such repairs pursuant to such notice. And after expiration of the said three day period, the department shall be authorized to make such repairs and cost therefore, including labor and material costs, shall be added to the wire charges due from such owner or payment there of, uh, shall be enforced in the same manner as payment for water supply be such use. And um, I could be wrong, but it looks like one thing is saying you repair it in two days and you just turn it off, or repair it in three days and it'll look, it'll look, or we will fix it. Then should both, yeah, that's right. They should say three or two up to the more. Two or three, it's up to you. Okay, well, I'm just, you know, I mean, I, when I look at it, it's like, okay, are we just going in? You, you got three days or two days to fix it and we'll right. turn it off, or we got two days to fix it and we'll repair it ourselves? Well, it's going to be three, depending on what you want, two or three, and uh, it should be. In my mind, an initial attempt to be made by should be the repair should be made by the department. Should be made by the department. Yeah, I mean, I, I would think that's the more important. Well, right. so, yeah, I'm just I'm just concerned about that? going on to private property to to do it. Mm -hmm. We're talking about private property services, so it would be on private property. So unless the code allowed it, they couldn't. Fix it. Yeah. So the code would allow them to do it within that three day period right now. Okay. But they can't just go in and be nice and fix it. It's actually mm -hmm. a large responsibility to operate and maintain that service. Okay. So Which, this gives them three days to do it. So, so both should be set at three days and we can turn the water off. And if, you know. if the owner doesn't want to repair it, then the department can at the owner's expense. Correct. Can. Okay. Authorized. Yeah. The department shall be authorized to make such repairs. Okay. So I got it. So I I, I, I guess it should just be changed to three, two or three days for both of those. That depends okay. on, the, yep. on the board. Okay. Your point both Thank you. Thank you. I think that'll go on. So uh, we're still in the uh, public hearing in relation to proposed local law number six of uh, 2021. Does any other member of the public wish to be heard at this time? Let's see. Let's see here. I don't believe anybody's up, right? Oh, let's see. No, there's three, people, three attendees. Nobody's raising their hand to speak. Okay, I'll ask uh, one more time. Uh, does any member of the public wish to be heard? Proposed uh, local law uh, number six. Hearing none, I'll entertain a motion to close the public hearing. So, uh, second. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. <laughs> All right, so we're doing this in the meeting because we did it last week. Okay, got it. 
Council member elect. How are you? How are you? Good. Most of you came as a so you know what, this is still on. Let me pause this. Started. I'd like to uh, welcome everyone to a regular meeting of the Road Town Board for November 9th, 2021. And ask the clerk to please call the roll. Council Member Hogan? Here. Council Member Newton? Here. Council Member Van Tassel? Here. Council Member Donahue? Here. 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 And ask that everyone please rise for Pledge of Allegiance. The Pledge of Allegiance is to the flag of the United States of America. To the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much, everyone. Uh, item one on the agenda is approval of minutes, and we have several sets. Um, we can take them all together, we can take them separately. Uh, we have the minutes of the regular town board meeting for October 12th. We have the minutes of the October 20th budget meeting, and we also have two hearings that were held on uh, October 
October 26th, the first for local law number three, and the second for local law number four. And finally, we had an audit meeting on that day. So whatever the board's pleasure is. Is everybody present for all of them? I was not here for the All right, so I will entertain a motion to adopt, uh, approve the minutes for October 12th. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? I abstain. All right, uh, motion passes. Uh, next, I'll entertain a motion to uh, adopt the minutes for October 20th and the three sets from October 26th. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Thank you. Second item on the agenda is our customary uh, COVID-19 update. Uh, just briefly, uh, in Saratoga County, we currently have 22 individuals that are hospitalized. Of that number, uh, 15 were not fully vaccinated uh, and the remaining seven have been vaccinated. Uh, the percentage of breakthrough in the fully vaccinated population in the county is presently 1.6%. And the percentage of breakthrough uh, that are hospitalized that are fully vaccinated in our population is 0.07%. Uh, a little closer to home here in the town of Monroe, we presently have 68 uh, active positive cases. And in the village of Southlands Falls, we have 11 active cases. And just briefly, I'd like to provide an update on the percentage of our population that is vaccinated. Um, as everyone is aware, the uh, vaccine is now available for children age 5 through 11. Previously, uh, it was only available to those age 12 and older. Uh, and uh, the percentage of the population that are age 5 and older is presently 81.6% of the county population. Uh, specifically, we have vaccinated 168 kids in the age bracket of 5 to 11 uh, with one dose, and uh, that does not include today's uh, vaccination clinic where approximately another 100 uh, more doses were provided. Uh, individuals that are age 12 and older, uh, the percentage that have received one dose is currently 88.1%, and the number that are fully vaccinated is 82.1%. Uh, percentage of the population 18 and older that have received at least one dose is 88.9%. Uh, those that are considered series complete is 82.7%. And then the, the important number here is uh, those age 65 and older, 99.9% uh, .9 of Saratoga County residents have received at least one dose and 92.1% are considered series complete. Uh, additional information on uh, uh, the upcoming COVID-19 vaccination clinics for children age 5 to 11 and booster clinics for seniors age 65 and older uh, are as follows. Uh, today we, we did uh, in the county uh, our public safety building, we offered the Pfizer vaccine uh, for 5 to 11 year olds. Uh, we also provided uh, the Pfizer booster vaccine for those 65 and older at the Galloway Fire Department. Uh, November 10th, the Pfizer Vaccine Clinic will be held for five to 11 year olds uh, who reside in Saratoga County between 2.30 and 5.30 p.m. at the Saratoga County Public Safety Building. Uh, registration is required. Also on the same day, the Moderna Booster Clinic for those age 65 and older. Uh, is available between the hours of 9.30 and 12.30 at the Saratoga County Public Safety Building. Um, registration is preferred, strongly recommended. Uh, there's limited same-day walk-in appointments that will also be available. Uh, vaccines are free, uh, therefore there's no proof insurance required. Um, just a reminder, for more information, you can visit uh, Saratoga County website at www.saratogacounty. York.gov backslash COVID, uh, and you can register for any clinic 
and uh, Circle of County provides free COVID-19 vaccine clinics and booster clinics at our public safety building uh, through a partnership uh, with private businesses across the county. And uh, for any additional information, you can call Public Health at 518-584-7460. Item three on the agenda is uh, Local Law 5 of 2021. Uh, we had previously held a uh, public hearing on this local law. Uh, I don't believe we received any written or oral uh, comments uh, entered into the record. Um, and at this time, uh, I think that uh, uh, I would entertain a motion to uh, move forward with adoption of local law three. If the board would like to do that, or some council. Go ahead. There are some steps that we need to take uh, beforehand. Do uh, you want to walk us through that? Sure. Uh, as we do with all of our local laws, we have before you the speaker forms. <laughs> Parts one, two, and three. I have taken the liberty of going through part two and indicating that the adoption of the law, which is the action has no or small impact. As um, we have in the past, I am happy to go through questions one through 11 and have the board respond. Or if the board is comfortable with how I have it laid out that one through 11 answers are no or small impact, then the board can go through part three and issue a negative declaration. What is the board's pleasure? I'm fine accepting the one through 11 part two and the other part three. That's fine with me, Chuck. And is it the board's um, decision mm -hmm. that there is no significant impact with respect to the local law? Yes. yes. And is it the board's determination that you wish to um, issue a negative declaration of your speaker? Yes. yes. And as with our prior local laws, um, that negative declaration is within the resolution that you have before you. So we'll ask uh, to read the uh, resolution. Uh, just before she does that, uh, just want to highlight uh, what the purpose of this local law is for uh, members of the public. And what we're doing is changing the the income threshold uh, under the town of Barrow, uh, section uh, 130-2B, uh, the income of an owner or the combined income of owners must not exceed 24,000. Previously, uh, it had been 17,500 <laughs> for the income tax year immediately preceding the date making application for the exemption uh, that pursuant to provisions 467 of the real property tax law, uh, there's a sliding scale of what that exemption would be, uh, ranging from 50% uh, to, to 5%. So with that, I'll ask the clerk to read the proposed resolution. Resolution Town Board, Town of Monroe, subject adoption of Local Law 5 of 2021, amending Chapter 130, Section 130-2B in the Code of the Town of Monroe. Whereas the town board of the town of Monroe is considering the adoption of local law number five of 2021, which if adopted as proposed would amend chapter 130, section 130-2B of the code of the town of Monroe. And whereas the board finds that the adoption of local law number five of 2021 is in the best interest of the town, and it is necessary to provide for the health, safety, and welfare of town residents and property owners, especially the senior citizens of the town. And whereas the board finds that the adoption of local law number five of 2021 is a necessary and proper exercise of authority by the board. And whereas the authority for the enactment of this local law is found in section 10.1i of the municipal home rule law. And whereas pursuant to section 20 of the municipal home rule law, a public clearing on the proposed adoption of local law number five of 2021 was properly noticed in the newspaper and posted and was duly conducted on November 4th, 2021 at the town municipal complex. And whereas the board has considered the public comments made at the public hearing, and whereas the board serving as lead agency for the solicited action under seeker 
reviewed a short environmental assessment form and determined that the action does not present any adverse environmental impacts. And whereas after thorough review and deliberation, the board proposes to adopt local law number five of 2021. And whereas the attorney for the town has prepared the necessary documents for filing this local law with the Secretary of State, including the text of the law itself. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the board hereby adopts local law number five of 2021, which amends the law as stated above. And be it further resolved that the board adopts and authorizes the filing of negative declaration. Be it further resolved that the board hereby authorizes the town clerk and the attorney for the town to make such minor modifications to the local law documents as they deem necessary and thereafter are directed to execute and file the said documents as required by law and to take all of the necessary action for the promulgation thereof. Thank you. Motion to approve. Second. Any discussion? Oh, I'm just glad we're going to get this one in the books. Long time. Uh, any other discussion, comments? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries unanimously. <laughs> Uh, next item on the agenda is proposed local law number six of 2021. It's in relation to our water ordinance. Uh, we held a public hearing uh, earlier this evening uh, and received no, uh, no testimony, either oral or written. Public hearing has been closed. And at this time, I'll have counselor uh, run through the usual. Well, actually, um, during the public hearing, Councilman Hogan had identified a change that he was looking to make, um, and we need to amend that for. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, if you have conversations, could you take them out into the hall? Sorry, excuse us. Okay, thank you. Appreciate it. I apologize. Sorry. Go ahead. Um, Councilman Hogan? Yes. Can you identify again where in the law you had a, a question? 21B. 21B. It stays two days there, and then 25C stays three days. Okay. Can you give me one second? Yes. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. What is the board's pleasure? I know that Special Counsel um, Bill Ryan did speak to you about this during the public hearing. I don't know if um, you have any further questions for him or if. Uh, the board wants to tell me if we're changing it to two or three. Is is one better than the other? I mean, three. I would say three. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's fine. Three. My recommendation would be three. Okay. So it'll be three in twenty one B and twenty five C. Correct. Correct. <laughs> Are there any other um, minor changes that the board thought was necessary to make? Given that that is merely just a consistency change, it doesn't appear to be substantive that we would have to rehab to start the public hearing all over again. So at this point, just like we um, just did with the Public Law 5, we will go through the seeker process. Um, again, you have for you the seeker, I have the same question, or I label all of them as no or small impact. I'm happy to go through one through 11, or we can do what we did before and um, can advise that you're comfortable with accepting no or small impact as one through 11, and then issuing a negative declaration. But there is no significant environmental impacts through the adoption of this law. Yeah, um, yeah I'm comfortable with what we did the first time, accepting one through 11. So is it the board's determination that the adoption of Global Law 6 would have no significant environmental impacts? Yes. Sure. And is it the board's determination, therefore, to issue a negative, negative declaration? Yes. yes. There is a resolution before you that has that um, the negative declaration within it, along with the adoption of the law. The clerk, the clerk has copied that. <laughs> I would like to read that. Resolution Town Board Town of Monroe subject adoption of Local Law 6 of 2021, repealing Chapter 145 in its entirety and replacing it with new Chapter 145 of the Code of the Town of Monroe. 
Whereas the town board of the town of Moreau is considering the adoption of local law number six of 2021, which if adopted as proposed, repeals chapter 145 in its entirety and replaces it with a new chapter 145 to apply to the consolidated water district. And whereas the board finds that the adoption of local law number six of 2021 is in the best interest of the town, and it is necessary to provide for the health, safety, and welfare of town residents and property owners. And whereas the board finds that the adoption of local law six of 2021 is a necessary and proper exercise of authority by the board. And whereas the authority for the enactment of this local law is found in section 10.1i of the municipal home rule law. And whereas pursuant to section 20 of the municipal home rule law, a public hearing on the proposed adoption of local law number six of 2021 was properly noticed in the newspaper and posted and was duly conducted on November 9th, 2021 at the town municipal complex. And whereas the board has considered the public comments made at the public hearing, and whereas the board serving as lead agency for the, this unlisted action under seeker reviewed a short environmental assessment form and determined that the action does not present any adverse environmental impacts. And whereas after thorough review and deliberation, the board proposes to adopt local law number six of 2021. And whereas the attorney for the town has prepared the necessary documents for filing this local law with the Secretary of State, including the text of the law itself. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the board hereby adopts local law number six of 2021, which amends the law as stated above, and be it further resolved that the board adopts and authorizes the filing of an active declaration, and be it further resolved that the board hereby authorizes the town clerk and the attorney for the town to make such minor modifications to the local law documents as they deem necessary, and thereafter are directed to execute and file the said documents as required by law and to take all of the necessary action for the promulgation thereof. Thank you. Motion to approve. Second. Uh, any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Yes. Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Thank you. Thank you very much for uh, all the work that went into that. I know it was an extensive process and uh, you know, we, we couldn't have uh, got there in uh, a deliberate way without the assistance of our special counsel, uh, Wayne Ryan, and the engineer uh, for uh, the town engineers, uh, Don Rose. So thank you very much to both of you. Thank you, guys. Team effort. Carla, just make sure I get all the signatures here. We just read you guys something. something <laughs> <laughs> uh, next item on this evening's agenda, uh, item five is adoption of the 2022 town budget. And uh, I do have a uh, prepared uh, motion, uh, whereas the town board held a public hearing for the 2022 preliminary budget on November 4th, 2021. And whereas the public hearing was held in accordance with the New York State General Municipal Law, uh, so be it resolved that the town board adopts the 2022 preliminary budget as presented at the public hearing. So if the board uh, is ready, I'd entertain a motion to or entertain uh, someone moving that motion. Motion to approve. Second. Any discussion? Again, thank you. All those who were involved in some other team process and did a great job for our taxpayers. Great team members. Thank you, everyone. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Item six I have, uh, I think board members received copy of correspondence from. The town zoning administrator uh, Jim Martin in relation to uh, the individual that we just hired for the clerk's position uh, in that department. Uh, there has been a conversation between the clerk's office and uh, the building department uh, whereby uh, the, uh, Katrina Flexen would be willing to uh, be the planning and zoning board secretary. However, uh, 
a motion previously uh, adopted by town board uh, made the hiring of the deputy deputy town clerk uh, predicated on the fact that uh, that individual would do the job for one year. So it's not as easy as just switching it over. It's going to require uh, either rescinding or amending a previous resolution and then moving forward a new resolution. So I wanted to bring to the board's attention and see how I would like to handle it. Whatever the cleanest way is to do it, um, would we have to have a resolution number that we would rescind and change the wording? So, so the resolution uh, that addressed this issue uh, back in August of this year uh, was made by Councilmember Hogan, seconded by Noonan. Uh, Councilmember Noonan uh, approved unanimously, uh, essentially appointing um, uh, Arthur Bartlett as deputy town clerk, deputy receiver of taxes, and deputy registrar uh, with a salary. Uh, and the appointment date uh, will be provided to the town board by the town clerk. And um, Ms. Bartlett also agrees to perform the duties of the planning and zoning board secretary for a minimum of one year. Resolution is 2021-262. So when we uh, just amend her hiring word that says, uh, yeah, I would really, remove the part that yes, that would be the cleanest way to do it. Is you don't want to rescind the entire resolution, then you have to do two separate resolutions to keep to hire for the deputy clerk position and then um, add that job portion to the planning and zoning clerk position. Okay, just taking some notes here. So let's see if I can do this. I'd like to. Uh, sure. I'd like to make a motion uh, to amend resolution 2021-262, which was the appointment and hiring of Barbara Barlett uh, for the deputy clerk position. Uh, at which time she was hired to also be the planning and zoning clerk. Is that the right, what she, is that what she did? Planning secretary. Zoning, se, planning and zoning secretary for a minimum of one year. I would like to remove the minimum of one year from her <coughs> hiring detail. Did that cover that or not? Is the planning and zoning secretary portion only for the one year or was the appointment? Just the planning and zoning. Okay. Yeah, just remove the one year. So that's your motion. That's our motion. Is there a second? A second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? The motion carries unanimously. So uh, that would then require, uh, in order for uh, minutes to be. Oops, that's wrong. Uh, so this one, so okay, maybe this one's well. Sure. This one's, uh, so, so I'm going to take a motion uh, uh, that would include that uh, Katrina Flexon, uh, clerk of the town of Monroe Building Department, serve as secretary of the planning board and the zoning board of appeals, and receive a stipend not to exceed one hundred dollars per meeting. So moved. Second. Any discussion? I would just add that the uh, the rate is that which the board approved at our organizational meeting. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Uh, before we move on down the agenda, I uh, just want to recognize uh, Council Member elect Mark Stewart, who's in the audience this evening, congratulate you on your win. And uh, also, if you have the time, uh, we have an executive session. And you're welcome to join us uh, during that executive session. Thanks. So uh, nice to see you. Uh, next item on the agenda is the uh, number seven Southlands Public Park County Holiday Parade. Uh, I have received a request uh, for from the fire company to um, close part of Route Nine uh, in an effort to. 
provided for a sex, successful parade from, uh, I believe it's uh, Blueberry Road uh, all the way to River Street. And uh, the fire company, there's certain requirements. In other words, uh, any individual who's going to uh, receive a permit from the state of T is required to have a five million dollar insurance policy, uh, which can be uh, achieved through a million dollar per occurrence policy and a four million dollar umbrella. Uh, and they're well aware of all the requirements for that. However, as part of the uh, 33B special use permit uh, by New York State DOT, it requires municipalities to uh, be in support of it. So I would entertain a motion to in support of the South Coast Lost Fire Company Holiday Parade, where they will conduct it uh, along Route 9 in the town road from Bluebird Road to River Street in the village. So, second. Any discussion? Uh, just to be clear, are they still using the same parade route though from Wayne Street down to River Street and they, and they just need to close that section of Route 9 while the train's going on? There's a train going to go, that's like two mile, yeah, or three mile, right? It's going to go the whole distance. It's, it's the longest parade we've ever had in the town of Rome. All right. Well, well they, go they indicated that it's the same yeah. route that was used two years ago. I don't know if that's accurate, but I didn't have that time to follow up. So I'm going to have to go with It's going to be a little kid dropping left to right. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. So we have a motion and a second. Any other discussion? All in favor? Ah. Any opposed? Motion carries unanimously. <clears throat> Great. Right. That's the one. Three hundred and one. Item eight on the agenda is uh, in relation to uh, the sewer treatment uh, alternatives that the town is exploring, which will require uh, completion of secret uh, and a resolution. We'll be looking at part two and part three. And counselor, do you want to? Just uh, let us know where we need to go. I, I can. I, I note that um, project engineer Don Rose is in the audience today. Oh, okay. I'm happy to have him kick in a little bit because I will urge you to compare parts two and three as well as the narrative. So, and Mr. Okay. Mr. Bradford, if you don't mind, I'd like to have Mr. Rose. Yeah, sure. Uh, uh, let me just give a, uh, the mechanics of what we're doing briefly and uh, uh, what we need to do this evening to move forward. So briefly, it's a uh, uh, consideration of an alternative that would redirect this charge from the district block extension fire to the county system. The route of that discharge would go along local roads uh, and connect it to the Saratoga County system at Valley Road. As a part of the consideration of that alternative and potential grant application on the fire seeker to be completed, uh, we assisted with preparation of part one, which you acted on last uh, meeting, declared yourself as lead agency and issued coordinator of the large. Uh, we're lucky enough to get coordinator to do responses back so you don't have to do a special meeting. Very happy. Uh, no one has contested your uh, request to become lead agency. And you'll see in front of you uh, parts two and three which goes through your hard look at the environmental consequences of the alternative. The entire alternative is to be built within uh, the roadway boundaries, which are pretty much clear of environmental issues. Uh, any issues where we have to cross a water course would be drilled under to avoid any potential environmental issues. So it's pretty much as clear as they can get. And we even were able to receive no effect letter from SHIPO because it was just that straightforward. You're building a logging area that's previously disturbed. Uh, so in front of you is the secret uh, package for you to determine whether or not it's a uh, negative declaration of uh, significant impact. So uh, we can go down to the list or um, and I'll, I'll probably want to handle it. Uh, I can read to each, each box. Uh, I can tell you that uh, the impact on land, uh, the recommendation is that there's no impact on land. That is actually. So 
Mr. Supervisor, if, if, if you want, um, you do have the deck in front of you. Um, all of the questions have been answered as no or small impact as based on the information uh, prepared by the board and SHPO's no effect letter and uh, coordinated review. So um, I'm happy to go through and ask each of the questions um, for the public if you'd like me to, or we can go through and you can accept them as identified. And again, um, this would be a determination of no significant environmental impact if that's what the board decides. And you will note that there is, um, on, this is a long form because this is a type one action, that um, part three has an attachment to it which is a summary of the specific reasons why this is not an environmental, environmentally significant project. Again, you can read those if you like, but you have it all in front of you. Uh, the board is happy with everything they have in front of them, which um, will, of course, can be available to the public thereafter. Um, we can have a resolution in front of you uh, determining no environmental impact, no significant environmental impact, and a negative declaration. So then you do have the resolution there in front of you. Okay. Uh, Lead land has a copy. Who's like to do that? Resolution Town Board, Town of Monroe, subject seeker determination regarding the county connection mm -hmm. for sewer district number one, extension five. Whereas the town board has had an opportunity to review the county connection for sewer district one extension five, which includes the installation of sewer infrastructure to connect with the Saratoga County sewer district. And whereas the town board has reviewed part one of the long environmental assessment form prepared by the Burge group engineer for the project. And whereas by resolution dated October 20th, 2021, the town board declared itself lead agency for this type one project under the state environmental quality review act here and after referred to as seeker. And whereas the town sent lead agency designations to all interested and involved agencies, all of whom have agreed to the town's designation as lead agency for this action. And whereas the town has reviewed parts two and three of the EAF as to whether the action will have any significant adverse environmental impacts. And whereas after reviewing parts two and three, the town board determined that the action will not have any significant adverse environmental impacts when a negative declaration should be issued. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the town board hereby determines that there is no significant environmental impacts and that a negative declaration be issued. Be it further resolved that the attorney for the town is directed to file the negative declaration with the environmental notice bulletin. Thank you. Uh, so, this time, uh, I think a motion that I propose resolution. So moved. Second. Uh, any discussion? Yeah, you know. I, 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 I have been concerned, I'm concerned that I, I stayed here when we first moved this forward. Is that, you know, it, it's disappointing that we're going to take a lot of power trying to find sewer capacity. And um, I, I, I'm going to vote for this. But uh, once again, I, I think this, this this is something that we probably should have, you know, sewer capacity is probably something we should have looked in when the referendum for sewer capacity in 2017. <coughs> Uh, we didn't negotiate until the last time with the city, and we're, we're stuck now where we've got to do something. We have to do something. We have to move forward with something. So I will vote on this. I'm not pleased voting on it, but it's something we have to do. We have to keep all our options open. So I will be voting on it. Any other discussion? Uh, no, but as a member of the board who was part of this process from the start, I do feel as if we've been trying to negotiate in good faith with the city of Glens Falls for this entire process. So to characterize what we've been doing as not negotiating way to the down, I would say it's a mischaracterization. Um, but we are, I think, making a great move for the future of the sewer system in Town Row for 50 to 75 years down the road. So those are my comments. Uh, I would just like to add that uh, uh, we as a board have a responsibility uh, to protect the interests of uh, whether it's the taxpayers or the ratepayers here in the town of Monroe. And 
I can tell you, for one, having been the person that has had multiple meetings uh, with the city of Glens Falls, uh, I will not allow the town and road to be held hostage uh, to these outrageous proposed uh, fees and penalties uh, for uh, a new agreement with the, the uh, city of Glens Falls without uh, providing an option to our uh, rate payers, number one. Number two, the reason that we're in this position, the reason that we're in this position is because previous boards under a different administration sold out our town. They sold the capacity for developers to put apartments to a PUD process in this community that took the capacity that had been earmarked for economic development for the future of town Monroe along our commercial corridor and wiped it away. So uh, I support this resolution this evening. Uh, I'm going to do everything I can uh, to ensure that uh, we get the best deal for the ratepayers in, uh, in our various uh, sewer districts. And uh, I'm committed to uh, moving forward uh, with a potential tie into the county wastewater treatment plant where this town will have a say in the policies that are put forward by that agency. Not somebody will we take whatever is handed to us from another county. And I'm not going to do that. So that's my position. And I encourage the board members to vote in support of it. I have in front of me, I have a, in front of me a contract with the city from 2011. It gave me 10 years to negotiate capacity. The thing ran out in July, the town was negotiating capacity in August. Now, it, it seems to me like we dropped the ball, is what we did. We dropped the ball, and I'll say, I'll include myself in this. I was not on board for a lot of this time, but I was naive enough to think that in 2017, when, when this referendum passed, we started looking at capacity. Capacity was available. We had the opportunity to buy capacity from City of Glens Falls. We failed to do that. And you talk about past, past administrations. You were part of those past administrations. Actually, uh, yes, I was. Uh, I was not the CEO of the town, I was a council member, as you are a councilman. And when that contract came up for negotiations, it was Supervisor Jenkins that was sitting here in this seat. And I asked numerous questions. And I was lied to on the record. And I made my decision based on the information that he provided to us. And we did not receive a copy. Or at least I didn't receive a copy of what we were voting on. And that's the way the business is now. I will not do business that way. And we're doing everything transparently. And just so you know, I was negotiating with the city well before August. Any other discussion? In fact, in 2017, you negotiated. You were supervisor since 2017. And it was not negotiated until 2020. And uh, so do you believe we don't have the best today? Is I know we have limited capacity. So wait a minute. Do you or don't you have Yes, we do have to. Okay. Uh, rest of my case. Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Item 10 on the agenda, transfer station. I do have. So I'd entertain the motion uh, that the town board hereby direct the attorney for the town to inform the city of Glens Falls uh, that the town intends on exercising its option pursuant to section 14.02 of the facility agreement between the Board of Water and Sewer Commissioners of the city of Glens Falls and the town of Moreau, as amended by the addendum to the facility agreement dated August 21, 2008, to renew the agreement for a term of 10 years on the same terms and conditions. And I would entertain a motion to adopt a resolution. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Uh, we got um, I, I, I will again be voting on this. I'll be voting on this. Um, I think we have to keep all our options open. Hopefully, we can come up with a great with city funds calls. It'll cost us less than nine or ten million dollars that it would cost us to go to the just to have a seat at the table. 
Any other discussion? Uh, to be clear, that was not factual, it was not cost coming from any dollars for that. It cost the taxpayers. Taxpayers of the United States of America, the state of New York, and the town of Vermont. Uh, Nothing's free. It will not cost uh, the town of Moreau $9 million. No, it won't. It will cost the taxpayers. Federal taxpayers, state taxpayers, if we get a, if we get a grant, and the taxpayers of the town of Moreau. It's going to cost millions of dollars. Um, any other discussion? No. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Mr. Terry is next. Now, uh, item uh, 10 on the agenda is the transfer station. I received uh, some information from uh, uh, our transfer station employee, from a transfer station employee, an in individual stop by that's willing to. Uh, call out our compost. Uh, we have a proposal from O'Connor Realty doing business as uh, O'Connor and Stand and Stone from Lance Falls. Um, it says we hereby submit specification estimates for hauling compost. Uh, we will provide all trucking labor equipment to load to remove both new and old tread compost from your transfer station at our expense. Uh, I don't believe that we did an RFP on that, um, but this individual stopped by, and uh, I, I said I'd bring to the board uh, for discussion. So I don't know what the board's pleasure is on it. It does have value, I will tell you that. Um, I'm not sure where you want to go. Transfer Station uh, Committee, how are we at the space down there? Do we need this? Space. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'm okay referring to the transfer station and give, give us a recommendation. We can bring up a, another board meeting. Yeah. Okay. Right. Sounds good. All right. Uh, item 11. Uh, we have a couple items on your uh, water department. Uh, the first one is the uh, board will need to accept the resignation of Christian Mechanic, uh, who submitted his res resignation on November 4th, 2021. Uh, and basically, I'll read it to you. Hi, Christian Mechanic, as of 11 4 21. Put in my two weeks' notice, signed Christian Mechanic. Uh, so that means the uh, his last day of employment would be November 17th. So we have acknowledge that and accept it. What do we do? Yeah. Uh, motion to approve acceptance. Second. All in favor? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? <laughs> motion carries unanimously. Uh, so, uh, what that does is creates an opening, um, opening uh, in our uh, water, water and sewer department. And uh, I know the personnel committee has interviewed uh, a, a few individuals, I believe, uh, and I've interviewed uh, some as well. And uh, at this time, uh, I would recommend uh, hiring uh, Jeffrey S. Dickinson as a laborer, uh, full time for the water sewer department, uh, at a pay rate of $24 per hour, effective November 29, 2021. Uh, the position is going to be a provisional one for a six month period and subject to successful completion of a background check and pre employment physical within a two week period from the effective date. Motion to approve. Second. Any discussion? The candidate's a strong candidate. As you mentioned, he was interviewed by the personnel committee. He comes with experience and uh, carries some certifications that uh, are currently still in force. So. It's a, it's a step in the right direction. And he's a strong candidate. Does he have any licenses? Yeah, he's fully. Yeah, he's got it. Yeah, he's got it. Oh, okay. Oh, Quite a few. Is that true? Any other uh, discussion? 
All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Uh, in the interim, uh, I have reached out to the Town of Wilton Water and Sewer Authority and uh, the Town of Moreau uh, is now uh, operating under the license of their director. Uh, and we will have, uh, I, I think it's a good thing for the Town of Moreau uh, and uh, I've had several conversations. I know Council Member uh, Van Tassel uh, toured our facilities with uh, the director. His name is uh, Mike Mooney. And uh, he came along with uh, one of his licensed operators, Robert uh, uh, And uh, these individuals, I can tell you, Mike uh, does a Phenomenal job. I think he's worked 30 years, nearly 30 years with the town of Wilton. Um, he is a licensed operator as well. And uh, he would very much like to uh, have a workshop with the town board uh, to review uh, what he saw when he came uh, up here and did a tour uh, of our facilities. Uh, I think uh, some of the recommendations he uh, will come up with are sorely overdue. I think it'll make the town of Moreau more efficient. Uh, but in the interim, um, I would entertain a motion to bring uh, them on uh, as we go through this transition on how we're going to shape that department. Uh, one thing that he said today when we spoke, which I was very interested in, uh, he felt that based on his tour of our operations and what we do, um, we don't need any more than one lot licensed operator. Uh, if we have uh, a contractor on standby that could handle emergency breaks and things like that. So that will be something that uh, he will be discussing with the board uh, in the near future. So at this time, uh, I would entertain a motion uh, specifically, whereas uh, New York State Department of Health requires public drinking water system to be administered by a properly licensed water tank operator pursuant to uh, 10, uh, 10 NYCRR subpart 5-4. Uh, that is resolved that the town supervisor is authorized to sign a contract subject to review and approval by the town attorney for the town with Michael Mooney, director of the Wilton Water Sewer Authority at a rate of $75 per hour and Robert Campero, a uh, license operator at, operate at a rate of $50 per hour to provide all necessary oversight to ensure the Town of Monroe Water and Sewer Department complies with all relevant laws and the New York State Department of Health regulations on an as needed basis. So uh, this doesn't mean that uh, they're going to be in the town every day for eight hour days. Uh, they will be providing the oversight of our personnel uh, that are already here. And uh, obviously, uh, should the need arise, it will be here. Uh, and this is open ended. We'll get more details of uh, everything they're willing to do for us in the future. Um, and I think that'll be discussed in the workshop, uh, which he's hoping that we can get together in the next three weeks or so. So, so uh, I would entertain a, a motion to move that resolution. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Just comment that I did, as you mentioned, did travel with both of the individuals. They're very knowledgeable. They're familiar with the equipment we will be, uh, be operating. Uh, I believe they have a really, good, <clears throat> a really good understanding of our, our system. And uh, Christian did a good job sharing so Great. Look forward to uh, the knowledge that they can bring to the table as we continue to develop that department. Great. Thanks. Uh, thanks for uh, taking the time to do that. Any other discussion or comments? Hearing none, all in favor? Okay. Any opposed? Motion carries.
So today we received an in council and a copy of the uh, petition for a water district extension. I did not. So I knew it was coming. I just opened the train. We'll get to a copy of it. I received it late this late this afternoon. Um, they're looking to be uh, added to the agenda at our next available meeting. Obviously, it's not going to be done this evening because uh, it was coming in the uh, 12th hour. So, 11th hour. Uh, so, we'll get you a copy of that. We want to make you aware of that. Uh, it's in relation to Jacoby's Farms uh, subdivision. Uh, and we can talk about that before next board meeting. Will we give uh, our engineer copies? Yes, that? absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And the special counsel. Okay. I think that's a good idea. Mm -hmm. I agree. Uh, let's see. That's all I have for water department. Uh, agenda item 12 is supervisor items. Uh, just a few uh, things. Uh, I want to make the board aware that I received a revised certificate of notice to close the highway, which is the uh, Forceville Road. Uh, as you know, they're doing bridge replacement. Uh, I think that's North Branch or something. Yeah, right yeah. there. Uh, and with all the heavy rains that we got, they got delayed and put in the box covered in there. So I think they're just going to start paving this week and guardrail shortly after that. So uh, they uh, are required to provide the town and other municipalities and certain services, fire, MS, things like that, to have noticed. And what they're saying now is that uh, uh, they hope to have it open by November 30th, end of the month. So that's no Yeah. And I forget about everything. I think it was uh, August. Uh, I want to update the board on the standby generator here at Town Hall. Uh, we had received a quote from Milton Cat, and our highway guys looked at it, uh, indicated that they could do the repair uh, if they got the parts. We reached out uh, to Milton Cat, I think Paul reached out, and uh, it turns out that the uh, work that needs to be done is not applicable to that model engine. So we don't know exactly what needs to be done to it. We're working to get that work uh, repair order. And when we get that, we, we already have authority to buy a, by resolution to purchase the parts. Um, then we can have the work done. But you know, I, just, I don't understand what happened after we're trying to kill it. Yeah, so what Pete, Pete's not very happy. Oh, it was Pete, I'm sorry, it wasn't Paul, it was Pete that uh, picked up. The, 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 the work that they said they had to be done to it? The, yeah, it was not, did not take care of the issue. I guess I'm glad our guys looked at it and did a little more research to get to the bottom of it, because if not, we've been saying that belt and it still wouldn't be. And it wouldn't be fixed or Maybe it's a, I don't know, a real cheap fix. And I hate to say there was some dishonesty going on there, but uh, well, we'll just get to the bottom of it, I guess. Yeah, so so Pete's on top and he's waiting for more information from the okay. okay. Uh, so I, I wanted to bring up on the supervisor items. Uh, I received correspondence again today from Nexium. Not today. I have a so so I'm not sure exactly what they're looking for. They're looking for a utility easement across one of our lots. Is that what they're looking for? They are, and they are also looking for us to give approval on their plan, their final plan. Gosh, the word for the pilot and stuff. No, no, no. Oh, no, they haven't even prepared us the information on the pilot. Like, this document does have like what the town would receive. Well, I don't have that. Oh, okay. So it, it came in my email yesterday. No, I didn't have that one. Um, 
you are not listed on there. And Travis Mitchell and Tim Martin are listed. So we'll make sure you get a copy of it. Um, as you know, they're really pushing it on the agenda. Uh, I, I personally am not in favor of utility right away on town property. Um, you know, I don't think we that's good practice. We haven't done it in the past. I don't know how the rest of the board feels. I think it came up once before. And the town board was not in favor of it. this project. Yeah. Right, they went down and put flags on the property, right, for us to see. Yes. Yeah, yeah. I went down there and walked to where they were, they were in the you know, So, is it my dad? Maybe, I'm not sure if that's the same thing again. There is important in a different spot, but still on. Um, it's on a paper road that the town owns. And that's part of the issue, too, is that there's a paper road. So, Paul needs to be involved in that. Um, if the town wants to move forward and give them that easement over the town paper road, you have the um, authority to say, <clears throat> don't just gravel this for access, put it to town and specifications in case the town wants to open up that road. So, uh, in general terms, uh, I had a conversation with uh, respective tenants uh, of the industrial park that are interested in that paper road. Um, so, the okay. uh, board needs to be aware of that. I think it has to be something that we take into consideration. Obviously, we have people looking at our industrial park. We have projects for the planning board uh, for our industrial park. Um, so, there's a lot of moving parts on that. Um, you know, we have to look at it globally, not just that well, that is one project that's come before the board. So, I'm going to turn this, okay. make sure you get a copy of it. and. We'll have to talk about it so the board can get briefed on exactly what they're looking for and what, what may be going on. Also. Yeah, my understanding is they want three things then. They want the utility easement, they want the pilot agreement, and um, they want the board to approve the decommissioning yes. plan. Yes. Which we, we haven't gotten that. No, we have all the comments. They've made all the changes. There are a couple things in the decommissioning plan that they're unwilling to do, so the board needs to discuss that. That, that, are, that the engineers have suggested should be done. Our engineers. Our engineers. Yeah, okay. All right, so I, I think it's a little premature to get this on the agenda. That's okay. All right. And that's the goal I have for supervisor items. Uh, under committee reports, uh, I think Council Member uh, Noonan, um, you have received a request regarding the substitute crossing guard. Because I'm not the personnel committee, did you get that? Uh, Any recommendations? Yeah, I have. Uh, we haven't, I haven't uh, been able to make contact with the individual yet. But oh, okay, so uh, so we did receive a yeah. application for. Substitute crossing guard. Yeah. I will get it to the personnel committee for review and possible action um, or just a recommendation. Yeah, I have that. I have a copy of this. Uh, uh, that's all I had in committee reports. Anyone else? Uh, 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 there's first things in the committee. She brought us all the stuff they paid down there. They got all that rush checked out. And the, uh, the highway departments have taken load after load after load out of there. So that's it's cleared it up pretty well. And if the bulldogs are going to be bulldogs, all that compost that we're talking about. And if we can get somebody to take some of that compost out of there and get that back in, because we need more down there. We did a great job of clearing that out. It looks really good down there. So. so are we saving those ships down in the river? Is that what's going on? Where are they going? There's a water path. Okay. So, uh, so we have money in the budget to secure county grants for paving the trail along the river. Um, any chips would be used on the non-paved portion, like uh, on the side. I don't, I don't think they're used in them along the river. That was a I, I, I think Mike said that they took some down to the wreck. Oh, well, I've seen. <laughs> yeah, they took some down to the wreck. I don't know where else they paid. I think they definitely took some of the river because I went down one day on lunch break and I was chips from them. Or, uh, oh, geez, I don't know. I gate was open, so I just started driving down and once the trucks were coming <laughs> this way. I backed up pretty quick. But uh, so I know they were dropping something off down there uh, down by that old uh, water 
plant that's no longer there. So, so the compost has value. You can just come to you can literally just give it away. Um, you know, maybe a transfer station wants to come up with an idea for an RFP. We put it out there, you know, figure out what we want to do for ourselves. Or <laughs> yeah, they, you know, they, uh, they just want to take it. Yeah. Uh, that's all I have. And anything else in the committee? All right. uh, so I do have to have a brief executive session to discuss the work history of a unnamed uh, town employee. Mr. Supervisor, yes. can we also add a discussion on current litigation? Yes. So an update on current litigation? Yes. All right, anything else? Um, all right, I'm going to invite uh, Helen and Aaron into uh, the portion of our discussion on an update on litigation. Yes, that's a good idea. Yes. And so, uh, entertain a motion to move an executive session for those purposes and, and ask that the uh, down. Roads uh, be invited to town engineer into that executive session. As well as council member Atkins. Oh, I'm sorry, yes. Council member Atkins. Ms. Holbrook. Fair. All bitter. All right. All right. Opposed. Motion carries unanimously. All right. Stop.
Yeah, you all set, Liam? Yep. All right, uh, we are coming out of executive session and would like the record to reflect that no action was taken in the executive session. And uh, so that takes us to item 15 on the agenda, which is other business. So do you want to have any other business? I've got a couple of quick things. One, one is like, thank you people for hanging out while we're doing our executive session. I was just wondering, I know the last two or three meetings we've had people come and, and hang out and to, 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 you know, speak. And uh, our executive sessions have been dragging on. And I was just wondering, just suggest that we couldn't move the privilege of the floor up a little bit, at least before our executive session. Because the executive sessions never know how long we're going to Sometimes they're five minutes, sometimes you people know it's half an hour. Yeah. And, and I just think that I think it'd be more fair to the people who want to speak and move it up. Like I say, it just for executive session. I don't know what you're talking about. Uh, 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 well, the supervisor puts the agenda together, and uh, we used to have the uh, uh, privilege of the floor uh, up early in the agenda. And, uh, you know, what we found is, uh, you know, the legislative portion of the agenda, which is, you know, the day-to-day the -day activities that we're responsible for, uh, you know, uh, started getting pushed later and later into the evening because the public portion became a dominant part of the meeting. Uh, so uh, at this time, you know, we used to have board meetings that would go to uh, one o'clock, two o'clock before I was supervisor. And I work very hard to make sure our, our meetings are no longer than an hour and a half at best. So I'm okay leaving where it is on the agenda because, uh, you know, uh, we do a good job of getting to the agenda and um, I, I don't think that it's an issue. Well, I hate to see people who want an opportunity to speak leave because our executive sessions go on and on and on. You know, and, and, and I just like to see, I like to see participation. I like to see a lot of participation. I really haven't seen some of that on board. I think we get two or three here, one or two here. So I don't think it would really cut into our, to, to, to the substance of our meeting. If we moved it up just before the executive session, I think it, and I think it's fair to our residents to, um, to to be able to come in and speak and not have to go out to the hall for God only knows how long. You know, sometimes, like I say, it's five minutes, sometimes it's 35, 40 minutes. But I, I just think it, it'd be, you know, more beneficial to, to people who want to speak to, to move this thing just before the executive session. Thank you. Any other questions? Uh, so now it is time for the privilege of the floor. Hey, I got one more day. Hey, I got one more day. Oh, no, you're being delayed. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, I'll just be excited. I'm going to bring this up again. I've got last time we went to the floor. I'd like to set a workshop for a similar uh, sort of law. Um, like I said last time, I think if you do well over to setting something up, sitting down, hammering out or Differences and get this law in the book. So I'd like to set, uh, you know, set a date, whatever, so we can have another another uh, workshop. We can sit down and hash this thing out. Um, I'm not right. I'm not right. No. But I spent a lot of time for uh, reviewing the pilot program before it because it actually is fairly expensive. Um, it's really inside the whole thing, and so I, I actually know a little bit more time. Not only for the people, like I said last time, the people who want to take advantage of solar, but the people who have, uh, have chimed in and talked, you know, one way or the other the issue. And uh, I believe that, you know, we've got all kinds of information. I can't give any more information than you. I really don't. 
And if you push this thing out, push and think this thing out, it's just crazy. But once again, it's up to the rest of the world. So at this time, uh, it is put to the floor. Uh, any member of the public that wishes to be heard, you have three minutes. And please state your name for the record uh, and your address. Yes. Per uh, basis of our right. We're just standing there. Come on up to the next <laughs> one. So, my name is Dan Campbell. Dan Campbell, my name. I reside at uh, 183 Old Sears Road, wherever that is. Yeah. 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 And I'm here on that instant at uh, Mount Prayer facility. So, uh, I was going to call that 911. And uh, it was bad. Uh, I, I called 911. My wife went out first. I know. Smoke. And she came back and she said, well, I breathe at her lungs at her eyes. And so I went out thinking, geez, what's going on out there? So I wanted to make sure there was no one out with that bird. That's how much smoke it got. It was very, very bad. So I came back in and I called 911. I told multiple times that my house is not fired. There's some kind of smoke out there that's not good for your health. <clears throat> After I did that, I called my neighbor, Claire. I didn't know what was going on. And uh, <clears throat> so we're waiting for the firefighters to come. I believe it was the Southwest Falls firefighters. I'm not sure why it was going to So when they came, they had no idea what was going on. And the chief came and introduced himself and said, No, that's not what burning, that's not what burning smoke. So, well, it's probably your gas. Said uh, something to the effect. Well, I seem to go far stretched, but so I explained to him because we have a relative that works in a correctional facility and he was doing exercise stuff there. He used to go on Thursday. He doesn't do it anymore. So I said, Something's going on up there. And it came down through. I'm sure they're doing an exercise up there. So uh, basically, what happened was I never seen that. Today. I know my, my neighbor was talking to me about my house. I figured I would be back and they searched around my house. And they couldn't find anything. And I was, that's when I was trying to town. And they had the gas mask on too at the time. And so I said to the other one, I said, Look, this is what it is. I'm pretty sure this is what it is. I just want to make sure that you know, you guys are aware of what's going on out there. Second time, I believe the first time was a summer, two summers ago. They're doing an exercise up there. And then uh, they're actually having a tour at the Grants Cottage. Something else happened with that. Same thing, but now they never came down to our place. Can you imagine all that smoke coming down? I mean, it was acres. I mean, I own 250 feet of rope cottage, and it probably went down three or four houses. Each one about 250 feet. So I went to the south and I went to the north. About three or four houses. So here, 750,000 feet each way. Why it happened, who it was, if there's anything that you could do, you know, help us out with this and not have it happen again. The other thing is, we also have. The state troopers up there at doing target practice up there in the field. It's loud, they've done it for a couple hours at a time. It's not just target practicing, it's repetitious. Why? I mean, you know, when we have a neighborhood here. Why are they using that facility to do that stuff? So, uh, so your time has just expired. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> did, did anybody else want to speak on the same topic? Yeah, I could because uh, I'll be happy. <laughs> yeah, 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 I, I appreciate it. I'm going to share this. Okay, my name's Clifton Arrow. I know Wayne Fire lives there, so right next door to the end. I call that. Uh, I talked to him considerably and said that uh, 
I was going to not do any more. Uh, I wanted to hear from the board and wanted to have minutes uh, taken that we are concerned because the sheriff had called me, or actually I called him back. He was going to call me back the next morning. And he said to me that uh, there had been an accident, but it was nothing to be concerned about. So I don't, I take that as meaning, you know, don't worry about it. But if it happens again, and there's small children playing, there's small children in that neighborhood, if they're playing out there and they get hit with tear gas, it's not going to be, it won't be the end of the year. So just been wondering, have you heard anything or done anything or what, what is your, uh, what have you done at, for, at this point? Yeah, so uh, as I indicated to you uh, that evening, I was made aware of the county emergency response. Right. As, I'm notified of, as chairman of the board, I get all the notifications um, and that there was an incident and they were investigating it. And I think it was being reported on the news uh, either that night or the next morning that there wasn't a lot of information coming out from the Department of Correctional uh, Community uh, supervision. And uh, so I did reach out and was successful in talking with Assistant Commissioner um, Melissa Coolidge uh, with Docs, reports directly to the commissioner. And, uh, you know, I expressed their concerns and the neighbors' concerns about what had happened and how we, you know, they, they said, well, we do uh, regular training up there. We do it at all the state's correctional facilities. And I said, well, you know, we should be notified as a municipality that this is going on in case, you know, I get calls on it. And she said, well, we did notify uh, the, the, the state troopers. And I said, well, that's nice. That's not a state agency. But I wasn't notified. Nobody in town of was notified. Um, prior to talking with her, I did talk with the sheriff, uh, Sheriff Zerlo, and they were made aware of it. So uh, we did some back and forth. I was looking for updates. She was traveling with the commissioner. Uh, and I think I relayed this to you that uh, they have now committed uh, to not only notify the troopers, but the uh, county sheriff, as well as the supervisor of the town, uh, prior to when those uh, training events are going on. Uh, they do about, I think they do about 30 a month out there. Uh, but I said, you know, it's a problem of, uh, uh, you know, personal welfare and safety when, you know, an action that's happening on one piece of property uh, impacts others on another piece of property. And they say, yeah, it was, it was a weather event, and I guess there was a temperature inversion. So, I don't know, uh, tear gas, I think, is, is heavier than, than air. I'm not sure. But uh, so that's why I came down the valley, uh, off the mountain anyway. And unfortunately, the way the topography is, that's why I came up along uh, Old Saratoga Road. Uh, so uh, they did not commit to no longer doing any uh, training. Uh, they they did say that uh, they would they would notify us uh, when that type of training uh, is to occur again. And I believe that means quick response with uh, with tear gas. And I haven't been notified. Just yes, tear gas. That's, that's what they're going to notify you about. Yeah, because that's what the issue was coming down. Right. Uh, as far as uh, Firearms training, target practice uh, that occurs on uh, correctional property all across the state, and they, they will continue to do it. And they said it's not just uh, Department of Corrections that uses it, there's federal law enforcement that does as well. Okay, and we have minutes in the meeting. Uh, everything's being recorded uh, uh, by Zoom. And it's being recorded, the audio is being recorded, and the clerk uh, will be uh, making uh, minutes of you. Thank you very much. You got it. Thanks for coming. Yeah. Sure. Well, I spoke to the, uh, the agency in charge of the property, and that's, that's the information. You, you can reach out to uh, you know, your, your state senator, which is Senator Jordan. Uh, your assembly member is Kerry Werner. And uh, you know, make them aware of the uh, of the issue. Uh, I have spoken with them. I have written to them. Uh, they know about it. But uh, one thing I learned working for the legislature, uh, they will.
respond to uh, multiple complaints on the same issue in uh, an attempt to resolve it. So my recommendation would be to uh, you know, make letters of concern to them. To Carrie Warner. Carrie Warner and Senator Jordan. Sorry. Yeah. Thank you for your time. You're welcome. Thank, Thank you for coming. Thank you for coming. Thank you for so with that, I'm going to I don't want to say that because I don't know. Technology is not working in my favor right now. Um, nope, only Mrs. Perry is on that. Motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. Hold on, this is still on. Remember that, everybody. Uh, yeah.